In this episode, I travel to Japan and talk to the drivers from Petronas Team Toms. Konnichiwa! Hi guys, join me right here in Fuji Speedway as I talk to Kazuki Nakajima and Andre Lotterer as they get ready to battle it out in the Japanese Formula Nippon. Hi! Do you want to know more about the Asia Road Racing Championship? Stick around! Hi guys, join me Julie Wun right here in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Hello, I'm Kazuki Nakajima. I'm Andre Lotterer. And this is Motorsports at Petronas. Speedway is a racing circuit that was built in the early 1960s. It hosted its first Formula One race in Japan in 1976. It stands on the foothills of the ever impressive and breathtaking Mount Fuji. Fuji Speedway has one of the longest straight in a racing circuit. It measures up to 1.5 kilometers in length. And it is here that I will be talking to Kazuki Nakajima and Andre Lotre, the drivers of Petronas Team Toms. They are here to race in the famed Formula Nippon. Other well-known drivers that have won the Formula Nippon Championship and have gone on to the Formula One series are Eddie Irvine, Ralph Schumacher and Pedro de la Rosa. Today, Formula Nippon is considered as one of the top-level single-seater race in Japan. It has a second-tier status compared to the Pan-European GP2 series and its predecessor, Formula 3000. You may recognize some of the drivers in the Formula Nippon because they also race in the famed Japanese Super GT. In fact, both Kazuki and Andre were teammates last year in the Japanese Super GT. So let's make our way to the pit and meet them. <laughs> So Kazuki, thanks for having a walk with me. Yeah, thank you too. You know, it's so interesting. You started racing since you were 11 years yep. old. What made you decide that you wanted to be a part of this racing world? Firstly, my father was a big reason for me mm. because he was a race car driver. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, he was quite big for me. So I was probably one of the biggest fans of him. So I decided to start racing and uh, Initially, it was like uh, more like a hobby for me, but mm -hmm. uh, as I grown up, uh, I started to get more and more uh, into the racing, and uh, finally, I decided to to I mean challenge to become a race car driver when I was like 16, 17. Many years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, 10 years ago. And you race in other championships other than this Formula Nippon mm -hmm. as well. What is the difference between driving a Formula car and a touring car? Well, a uh, Formula car is, I would say, it's more exciting uh, mm. than a touring car in some mm -hmm. way. Because, I mean, the car is light and everything uh, comes very sharp uh, to a driver. The response of the car is really quick. Uh, in Formula car, it's I would say it's a, a real challenge for the driver. More challenge, more exciting, yeah, huh? It is, yeah. Ah. What do you think is the difference between the racing culture here or in Asia as compared to the racing culture in Europe? Uh, well, I think it's just a matter of history. In Europe, I mean, they have a history of motorsport for more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. So the motorsport is, is very well known. In Japan, I think the history is it's about like 40, 50 years. Oh. So I think we are getting a fun, which is range of, yeah, from kid to the old guy, but not as much as in Europe. I feel like in Asia, the motorsport is like for the more like younger people. So are you a superstitious person? Do you have a pre-race ritual? I'm not so superstitious. Mm -hmm. uh, 
lot of racing, but uh, at least I, I'm trying to keep the uh, same routine uh, mm -hmm. before getting to the car. For example, I'll do the same warming up, or, uh, do the relaxation at the same time before the race, because it's quite important to keep my mind nice and clear, because yeah. if you are find, uh, trying to find your gloves or helmet just before getting to the car, it's, it's uh, actually a big uh, travel for the mind. So uh, yeah, I just try to keep it nice and simple before, the, before getting to the car. So your family is very much involved in the world of motorsports. Yeah. What is the best advice your family has given you in regards to racing? Uh, well, probably the best advice was uh, when I was stepping up from karting to the, uh, the Formula car racing. I had to well, choose the way either mm -hmm. to go, I mean, to try to go with Toyota or try to go with Honda. So yeah, I was like somewhere between. Finally, I decided to go with Toyota, but it was good for me because in Toyota, I was like, I have to work harder. Okay. And also have to think about the, the problems by myself. So uh, I think it was the right choice for me especially for myself to improve uh, more. So uh, finally, I could uh, go into F1 with Toyota. At that time, if I made the wrong choice, yeah. me, it didn't happen. So uh, it was quite important. I, I think the yeah, first important choice in my life. So Most important choice, yeah. up until marriage. That's oh. what they say. <laughs> we'll see. But I think you made a great choice because you know, you're building your own name for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can improve and also there's a lot of nice guys around. So uh, I'm really enjoying my career at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm racing everywhere, which is uh, quite busy and tough sometimes. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's a pleasure as a race car. Very nice and it's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, Good luck you in your career. Yeah. And I'll see you very soon again. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Andre, so nice to see you again. And you were the champion for last year's Formula Nippon. Congratulations for that. Thank you. So Andre, knowing what it takes to win a championship, has that changed the way you prepare before a new racing season? Not too much, but of course, you know, you learn race by race and when you, yeah, you have success and you know what are the right ingredients for the whole weekend that you need. So obviously I try to take experience from that and to approach my race weekends with uh, the best way possible you know we have very short race weekends here you know we just have one hour of free practice on saturday and then it's straight into qualifying so you have to make sure that everything is right from the beginning on and that you don't get lost too much in trying too many things so you need a simple story and that's what i learned and uh, that's what i try to keep but racing is difficult so you know uh, to be on it from the perfect foot from the beginning is not always that easy. But you're doing very well and in fact you're a very busy man. How do you find time to go back home and visit your family or do they come to Japan to visit you? You know, I have my base in Belgium. Um, of course I'm really busy with my commitments with Audi. There's a lot of testing and I'm participating in the, the full World Endurance Championship. If I have to go to Germany, you know, have one stopover in Belgium, you know, it's not far and um, this is my life now and I do my racing flat out. It's the right time I can do this and I have all the opportunities to do it. And in Japan, I realized that there's a huge motorsports fan base and they are really young, most of them. I've even seen kids on the pit walk wearing your exact identical racing suit. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's, it's awesome to see this, you know. <laughs> uh, it's so cute and Mini it's, you. it's great to see that what we do we get something back, you know. If it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be here. And uh, it's, it's really nice. And we dedicate a kids' walk as well for the kids. So I think in Japan, it's a great environment for, for the fans to come watch the races. Uh, we get really close to them. We dedicate a lot of time. And I think Japanese fans are the most faithful and most uh, hardcore fans as well, you know. It's just great. And uh, of course, when you see a kid wearing your, your race suit, it makes you feel proud as well. That you're doing something right, huh? I guess. <laughs> 
So you have won the 24 hours of Le Mans for two consecutive years, last year and this year, and you even won the Super GT Championship. So do you think being part of different championships, especially different categories, would help you as a racer in the Formula Nippon? I think more that Formula Nippon helped me to be competitive at Le Mans because you know I've been racing Formula Nippon since 2003 and I learned a lot through that but now it's also the, the, the reverse like I like to keep racing um, all categories to also be good here you know so it's uh, Le Mans cars are really fast and for sure it helps me to, to keep my speed in the Formula Nippon as well because we don't test much we, we have a quite small schedule so any seat time is, uh, is an advantage but you know, Formula Nippon is the toughest and highest challenge as a driver and most demanding. So, most likely you will profit from this in Le Mans mm. or in GT. Okay, a more lighthearted question. I saw in your Twitter account that you cycled to Mount Fuji. Was that part of your training? And do you prefer indoors or outdoors training? Uh, I prefer outdoor, obviously. There's so much energy in the nature to, to soak in. If I see two, three weeks free, I sometimes I, I fly in my personal trainer and then we, we rent a, a lake house around Mount Fuji. So we cycle around the lake and then the, the tough sessions will be driving from the lake house to up to Mount Fuji. And uh, it's, it's nice as well, it's a great scenery out there. And to all your young fans out there who want to be a race car driver like you, what advice would you give them? Well, that's not easy. Um, Obviously, you know, you, you want to start in go-karts and you need some support for this so that will not be easy because it's not like soccer where you buy a soccer ball and you go play, you know, the material costs some money. So at the beginning it's okay, but then you have to make sure you're the best and um, this is your life, you know, you have to dedicate everything to that. If you're talented, you also work at it and uh, to be successful, you have to live it 24 hours a day, you know, that has to be your obsession. To, to be the best and uh, learn everything about it. Oh, cool, very good advice. Okay, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations, always nice to talk to you. We'll see you at the top. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With a rich history in motorsports, it's no wonder why some of the world's top drivers have raced right here in the Formula Nippon. Both Kazuki and Andre have amazing racing experience to add to the team's many accolades. Yeah, so blind spot on a road car, that's often difficult. Um, what you have to do is just really make sure to double check in your mirror, but also turn and look over your shoulder. You have to do both things. I learned that in driving school, to make sure that there's nobody there and then you can start to move across to the other lane. Taiwan is an island nation located southwest of mainland China. Its capital and cultural center, Taipei, is a thriving contemporary city that offers a unique combination of natural wonders, historical landmarks, and modern amenities. This year, Taiwan will be hosting for the first time Round 5 of the Asia Road Racing Championship. I'm here at the Pan Bay International Circuit, the venue for the race where Asia's best riders will be competing for the coveted title of ARRC Champion. Officially opened on October 9, 2011, the Pan Bay International Circuit is a 3.527km racetrack with 18 exciting corners. This year, both the Super Sport and Underbone category will ride it out for the first time on this circuit. I'm scheduled to meet with Ron to find out more about the championship. You guys with me? Let's go! Hey Ron, it's always a pleasure talking to you. For the benefit of those who are new to this championship, perhaps you could tell us what actually is the ARRC? The Asian Road Racing Championship is essentially a continental championship uh, developed for Asian riders. As you may know, we organise also the Malaysian National Championship. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing that, we realised that guys coming up from Malaysia or even from Indonesia or Thailand, going to the next level was a big step. 
And at that time, we felt there was a need to create a continent championship before riders are able to progress to the next level. So essentially, that was the main reason to develop Malaysian and Asian riders. And uh, by having this Asian championship, we are able to pull the best talent in Asia to race among themselves before they move on. Nice. And what would you say is the goal or aim of organizing a championship of this caliber? Obviously, the goal is always to send riders coming up from this championship into the world level. And uh, nothing gives us more pleasure to see our riders racing in our championship at one time than going on to the world championship and performing. Yeah, names like Zamri Baba, we have um, Hafisharian, even Desha Kraisad, Fujiwara and Aslan Shah, Kionari. These are names of some of Asia's best riders who have competed or are still competing in the ARRC. Would you consider this championship a stepping stone of sorts for the Asian riders? Definitely. I think um, we've reached a stage at this moment where we're able to get many young Asian riders. Uh, but the opportunity to move on to the next level is uh, getting a bit more difficult. Obviously, cost is a factor. But there is a need to continuously develop the riders. And ARRC at the moment is a perfect catalyst for that, it's a perfect platform. Uh, we have top riders like Fujiwara and Kionari, mm -hmm. who's raced at the very highest level. Uh, MotoGP, World Superbike, British Superbike Championship. And they've brought their experience into the Asia Road Racing. Obviously, this helps guys like Hafiz, Zamri, Aslan, competing against these guys. And um, they develop their skills then. So what we are setting now is a higher standard of competition mm -hmm. and any new riders joining our competition would benefit. Very nice. And why do you think the ARRC is so popular amongst the Asian riding fraternity? One reason is uh, we use production bikes and there is a huge interest uh, in underboot racing, especially in Asia. And the manufacturers support these people tremendously and as the need goes, uh, as the riders develop, the manufacturers now from each respective countries are supporting the riders to the next level. The ARRC obviously travels to different Asian countries and in the 2012 race calendar, we are right here in Taiwan for the first time at the Pan Bay International Circuit. So what are the criteria for choosing the perfect circuit for the championship? Obviously, the circuit needs to pass the minimum FIM homologation required and uh, FIM Asia does the homologation to check the safety of the circuit. That is the bare minimum that's required. But on the organization side, actually what we're looking for is uh, support from the local organizers, support from the local government for organizing such an event, custom clearance and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So there are quite a number of factors involved in deciding before we come to a particular venue mm -hmm. whether to host an Asia World Race. What are your personal thoughts on this circuit? Because a lot of the riders say it's very technical, very difficult, especially at the corners. This is a very, very technical circuit. I think it's the most technical circuit we have in the championship. And I think it's something totally different. It's, um, it's a circuit which I personally say distinguishes the men and the boys. Okay, um, this circuit's now only available in maybe UK, Australia. Very old circuits, plenty of turns, tight. So when you come to a circuit like this, you're taken aback. It's actually a very, very good circuit to train riders. I like how you said it. This circuit determines the men and the boys. But the La Salle circuit in Qatar is the only venue for a night race in the racing calendar. Was that the plan to introduce a night race in the championship? And what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of organizing a night race? When Qatar approached us to have a, uh, a race, we never imagined we would be hosting a night race. Obviously, from a cost point of view, only MotoGP organizes a night race in Qatar. And so we are sort of the second championship to have a mm -hmm. night race. So it was a huge privilege. And obviously, a night race gives us a certain image for the championship, having a night race. Everybody's very excited to go to Qatar. The negative point is that everyone doesn't have enough sleep because we finish race at about 11 o'clock in the day. Mm -hmm. By the time the team and crew are done at 3 o'clock in the morning, then they go back. And we don't start till about 3.30, 4 in the afternoon the next day, but automatically you just wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, man. Yes. That's... But it's good for the nocturnal creatures. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Good for them. Okay, last question. What are your future hopes for the ARRC? I mean, we've reached a stage now where we're very, very happy with the quality of racing we have, with the number of participants we have as well. 
Um, what we intend to do is probably at in the forthcoming future some rounds of the championship uh, in some new circuits. Uh, having a six-round championship, it's a bit tough for the riders if they make a mistake in any of the rounds and sorts of blow their championships away. In the forthcoming future, we hope one or two more rounds in new circuits, probably a new class to the championship as well, so we can bridge the gap between underbone racing and 600 cc. Very nice. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank you, Jen. Pleasure. And um, have fun watching this race here in Taiwan. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I like that. Mmm. The Petronas Asia Road Racing Championship is the perfect outlet for Asian riders to hone their competitiveness and riding skills. If you are seriously considering riding professionally, make sure you do it in a safe and controlled environment. Thanks for joining me, Julie Woon, right here on Motorsports at Petronas. What was like is like I coming fast in the straight and then I hit the brake and then I turning the corner, I prepare the throttle and then I gas the throttle and then coming the slide and then sideways, the real base like this and then you can see in the TV the power slide uh, move like this and then wheel spin and then sideways. Don't forget to log on to www.patmos.com.my if you want to find out more about your favourite teams, drivers or race results. And it is here that I will be talking to Kazuki Nakajima and Andre Lotre, the drivers of Petronas Team Tom. They, Team Tom! <laughs> Team Toms, sorry! And it is here that I will be talking to Kazuki Nakajima and Andre... I can't do it, let's go! Watching Petronas at Motorsports, no, again. I was like, like when you come in the turn, uh, first uh, you must uh, do. Sanya. 